Hi everyone, my name is Kayla. Welcome back to Kay's Hidden Shelf, where we talk about books. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my May wrap up. It's a bit late, but better late than never. I had some fantastic reads, unfortunately one DNF, and I don't think many of these books were planned originally, so it was a bit of a chaotic reading month. Let's talk about it. The first book I managed to finish in May was one that's been around quite a bit and been talked about a lot, but it was one that I felt like I needed to read more for myself than anything else, and that is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. The reason I felt like I needed to read this was I had been reading a lot of heavier content, darker toned things, and I just needed a cozy, feel-good book, and this hit the spot exactly what I was looking for. It was just fantastic. We follow Viv, who is the main character of this story, as she is trying to leave her life as a mercenary and open a coffee shop, which is not well known in the area she's trying to open it. She wants to bring something new to people, and that is just capturing a moment of peace, heartwarming joy, and just pure bliss, really. So I love this book. There are so many things about it that I enjoyed. Viv herself is an endearing character. She actually has quite a bit of character development in this, which I wasn't expecting for a cozy book. There's also an exploration of kindness, of non-judgment, of characters being more than what they seem, found family, and a reminder that what you put out can come back to you. Travis Baldry paints a beautiful setting in this book. There's an exploration of how people can come together even over something as simple as coffee. It was really sweet and there was actually more content or more depth to the story than I was anticipating. I'd never read a cozy fantasy or a cozy book before ever and I just thought it was mostly going to be a feel-good story which it absolutely is, but there is certainly more depth to the storyline and our characters than I was expecting, which was an absolute delight to read. When I started this, it was self-published, but since then it's become picked up by a traditional publisher, which is just great to see, and I do hope it reaches more readers. I listened to this on audiobook with the physical copy, and I have to say, Travis Baldry, he does his own narrations in this book, and it is phenomenal. He is probably going to be one of my favorite narrators going forward. He does such a great job with the voices, the character's tone, and bringing across the vibe of the story. The physical book itself is also beautiful. It has some lovely little artwork on the headers of each chapter. There's just a lot of attention to detail in this book and in the audiobook, which I really appreciated. This is a short read at just over 300 pages, and I believe the audiobook was just over six hours. I read this in two days, though I probably could have finished it in one if I had the time in just one sitting. I won't lie, this book had me craving coffee and cinnamon rolls, even though I'm not much of a coffee drinker, and I did end up making cinnamon rolls the day after reading this just because I was craving them so much after reading this book. It's just a weird side note, but that's how much the book reached out and touched my imagination and heart. Overall, I gave this five out of five stars. It was such a great read. I'd highly recommend it. Even if you're not big into fantasy or cozy reads, I think it's worthwhile to check out as it was a pleasant surprise for myself. This is certainly a book I look forward to rereading. Next was a book that I was actually planning to read in April as a part of Leslie over at the Nerdy Narratives Wine and Crime book club that she had started. Unfortunately, I couldn't get access to this book in April as my library just had a long wait time for it despite it being a new release. I did get access to it in May and that is The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. This is not a fantasy book. It is a thriller slash crime book or murder mystery, I believe, and it was certainly a thrilling and enjoyable read. This book follows a blogger, Shay, and she blogs about unsolved cases, so cold cases. She is fascinated by unsolved mysteries and crimes, and she 
absorbs all of her time into blogging and investigating these unsolved cases. Shay ultimately becomes lost in the lady killer case from decades past. Seeing her development as a character, seeing her passion for these unsolved cases and how it was portrayed to the reader was really interesting. There were many what ifs along with the exploration of trauma and the psychology of those in the crime world. I won't go into a whole lot of detail just as a big part of the experience of thrillers is the mystery behind it. I did feel like the story peaked around 50%, which I personally would have liked to see a bit more build up rather than hitting that peak of the story at 50%. It was still really enjoyable and it did have me on the edge of my seat. I just feel like it would have done better with a bit more build up toward the end. Overall, I gave this three and a half out of five stars. I do think I'd like to read more from Simone St. James, but not so much as a priority, more as a in-between fantasy books. Next, I finished Gerzel by I Anonymous. This copy was kindly sent to me from the author in exchange for an honest review, and I've actually posted a full review that you can find here up in the cards if you're interested. As a result, I will keep this a little bit on the shorter side just because I have already done a full discussion of it. This is a self-published historical fantasy by I Anonymous. It's book one in the Wars of Wrath duology and sets place, I believe, around 543 AD. It brings together legends from Camelot, North Africa, and many other groups of historical legends. It includes people from Saxons to the Moors to Vandals and many more. This book is short, but there is a lot of depth into it. And while I thought this was going to be a quick read, I actually ended up having to go back and just make sure I was keeping all the details straight because there is a lot of content and depth into this book. There is also an evil power hungry dragon in this and seeing that perspective was interesting, the legends and lore and how centuries of this dragon's plotting and scheming affects generations of people, that was really interesting to see too. The story does follow multiple perspectives in the book from different groups of people. It gives you an in-depth look into the story from all angles, and by the end of this book, I had counted 11 points of views that we see parts of the story from. This can be a bit daunting as it does jump around between perspectives, but I do have to say I enjoyed the depth that it gave and the different angles of perspective into the overall story. It made it feel denser and fuller, but in a short page count. We see a mix of different religions in this, along with Christianity's growth and spread to different cultures and religions. Along with this, there's also powerful and hungry political people in the background plotting and trying to make their move, so to speak. All of this tied together created much tension and a lot of plot lines to follow. Grizzle did keep a medium pace, I would say, at 255 pages. There isn't a whole lot of dialogue, I will say, as most of the story is explained through the character's experiences or inner monologues. While there were many aspects of this book that I did enjoy, there were two that did take me out of the experience a bit. The first being some choices of words that felt more modern to the time frame that this is written in. It wasn't terrible, but it did take me out of the world and overall reading experience every now and again. Second was the jump to so many viewpoints. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but because I was so focused on following the characters' connections to one another, the overall story, and how it all fit together, it did take me out of the reading experience of just starting and going through and finishing a book as opposed to reading some of it, going back, double-checking, reading, and going back to double-check that I had the character connections right. Again, not a bad thing. It made me pay much more attention to the story. It was just something that took me out of that overall reading experience of just 
starting and finishing. The tone of this book is dark and dismal. There are magical creatures, myths, legends. There's so much built into this. And of course, we can't forget the high stakes story that follows our characters. I would say Gerzel is a good read for any historical fantasy reader. And overall, I did give it three and a half out of five stars. I also read a book that will have a full review video either out now or after this video. It just depends on how the scheduling works out. Either way, I'll leave a link up in the cards for the full review video where you can find that if you're interested. And that is The Coward by Stephen Aryan. This is book one in the Quest of Heroes duology. This is a fantasy book that follows the five kingdoms and spins a different tale on the brave hero setting out on his quest. This is the tale of Cal Crescia, a hero and legend at only 17 years old. Only 10 years have passed since then and the five kingdoms have come at risk once again and they call for their hero of legend. Only Kel has a secret he hasn't told anyone, which is he's a coward and he has no intention of risking his life for others. The spin on the brave hero being a coward was actually what captured my attention for this. We see so many classic fantasy stories of the brave hero that comes out, yes, with scars, but he's brave and he goes and he fights the evil bad thing and he comes back a legend. This just spins a different tale on that where the hero was just a young boy who wanted fame and wanted to be that legend that he had heard so much about and the role models he looked up to from the other heroes of legend except he found he bit off more than he could chew and he was not that person. What captured my attention right away in this was the characters, their interactions with one another, their developments. There are so many other characters we see in this aside from just Kel Crescia. It felt not separated for having so many perspectives. There were many different points of views we see from Kel Crescia to Garen to Reverend Mother Brittak and Princess Secret, but there are a host of other characters that we get to see throughout the story as well, not necessarily perspectives from, but are woven quite deeply into Kel's story. Their interactions with one another, how they're portrayed, and their character developments, it was all really well done. And I'll be honest, this does follow the trope of the classic fantasy quest of the heroes setting out on a journey. While I do enjoy that, I do find it's a trope that can be quite repetitive. The story overall in the quest I did enjoy, but what I was invested in was the characters. We also see great representation for PTSD, the trauma that can follow people and how their life choices and perspectives can shape their future. All of this was great to see represented in that classic fantasy quest trope. It just gave a different feel to it and it was really enjoyable. There's a lot of diversity in this from different types of people, both fantasy and human. We get to see different terrains as they cross the lands of the five kingdoms on their quest and journey. There was just so much in this that I ended up enjoying more than I thought I would. Like I said, that quest trope doesn't always hit, but this time it hit pretty well, especially with how well the characters were done. The Coward had a slow to medium pacing and was the kind of story that paid off the more you read. I did listen to this on audiobook as well as reading the physical copy. Both were enjoyable. I did find the book to be a little bit clunkier, mainly because the covers are a quite stiff paper in comparison to the rest of the book. But overall, the audiobook was really enjoyable. Matt Wycliffe did a fantastic job bringing the characters to life and telling the tale. This had religious influences, political intrigue, a high stakes quest, along with great character development and fantastic action scenes. The Coward sets up for the Warrior Book 2 in the duology, which has an anticipated release date of August 9th. 
Overall, I gave this four out of five stars and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in the Warrior Book 2, which I did actually receive an e-arc for and I'm very excited to start soon. The last book I read was an e-arc that was sent to me from the author in exchange for an honest review and that is A Prelude to Ashes by Tiago Abdala. This is a self-published fantasy book at 144 pages. It's a novella that is a great introduction I found to the world of Avarin and the characters that we will see in A Touch of Light. Now at the time that I had read this and the time that I am recording this, I have not read A Touch of Light. It's a book that I'll be reading in July, but I am really happy I started with this as it introduces the world and the characters beautifully and I feel more prepared going into A Touch of Light. This prequel does take place a hundred years prior to A Touch of Light and introduces characters Adrian and Myra or Mira, depending on how you pronounce it. They are a prince and princess of different lands. Their fathers are mortal enemies and they have a secret that they've been hiding, which is their love for one another. They are trying to bring their nations together in peace and they are just caught in between the rivalry and hatred that their fathers share for one another. But the story explores what will happen when those rivals are confronted with a new enemy. The execution of the story was masterful with the world building done seamlessly through the characters' perspectives. While I know this is a novella, this read much faster than I was expecting. I'm quite slow of a reader and the way the story is told, how artfully it is explained, made for a quick, and enjoyable read. I was immersed in the characters, their developments, the conflicts between these two kingdoms, and of course the world building this as we get introduced to some griffins, which we don't often see or I don't often see in fantasy novels. We see political intrigue, religious themes, great action scenes, and of course griffins. I had been looking forward to reading A Touch of Light since its release in March of this year, I believe it was. I'm glad I kind of held out because reading this prequel I feel like was a good place to start. I enjoyed so much of this book. I cannot wait to start A Touch of Light now. I am so eager to see what happens with Adrian and Myra. And overall, I gave this five out of five stars. There wasn't a moment that I didn't enjoy in this. I'd highly recommend this for any fantasy reader. The change in Magical Creature was really refreshing along with the beautiful storytelling. I can't recommend this enough to all the fantasy readers out there, especially if you've been interested in starting A Touch of Light yourself. I feel like this is a good place to start for you first. Unfortunately, I did have one DNF and that was Dr. Zhivago by Boris Patsunik. It was a read-along that was being hosted by Dostoevsky in Space, She Was Only Evie, Miss Richards Reads, and Beautiful Minutia. There was a bunch of people that were joining in on this read-along and I was excited to try this Russian classic. It just did not work for me. I did start with the ebook and upon getting a few chapters in, I found I was confused as to what was happening, who were the characters, and how it was all connecting. I decided to try again and got the audiobook to see if that might help in connecting all of these details. Unfortunately, I was still left confused and I had no idea of what was really going on. As a result, I decided to DNF it. It could have been the mind frame I was in that I just was not able to grasp everything that was going on. I'm not quite sure, but there was similar feedback from everyone else as I believe most people, if not all of them, decided to DNF it for similar reasons as well. Unfortunately, this just didn't work for me right now. I might decide to try again at a later time, but for the time being, it's just going to be a DNF for me, sadly. So that is everything I read in the month of May. There were many fantastic unplanned reads. I'd love to hear from you. What are some of your favorite reads or your reading experiences overall from May? Leave a comment down below. As always, thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves.